And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And it came to pass after this that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Sibekai the Hushethite slew Sibekai that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. And there was war again with the Philistines, and Elhanan the son of Jair slew Lamai, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he also was the son of the giant. But when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimea, David's brother, slew him. These were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibekai the Hushethite slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jere Oregon, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath. There was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number. And he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimea, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David, and by the hand of his servants. What you see here is the salvage from the so-called Roswell UFO crash. This salvage included plates which had handprints uh, made in metal and these handprints have six fingers. The Holy Bible tells us that there were Nephilim who had six fingers. So this evidence would only support the fact that these so-called aliens are in fact Nephilim pretending to be aliens from another planet when in fact they were born here on earth from the illegal union between angels and human women. Secondly we have these so-called strange symbols on this piece of metal here. The trouble is though that these strange symbols are in fact Greek letters and spell the word eleftheria which means freedom. So according to this very evidence Whoever was flying in this craft, if anyone was in fact flying in this craft, they had six fingers, which means that they were Nephilim, and they also spoke Greek. The next thing you have to ask yourself is why the American government called these symbols strange symbols rather than Greek letters. They're very easy to translate for anyone who can speak Greek. If we compare these so-called strange symbols with the Greek alphabet, this is what happens. As you can see, it's quite clearly the Greek word eleftheria, but there has been a little bit of mucking around with the letters just here. Other than that, it's the word eleftheria, which means freedom. The Nephilim are the sworn enemies of God, and they seek freedom, eleftheria, from God himself. The official Roswell story is a ridiculous farce, which would mean that six-fingered Greeks were flying a flying saucer and crashed in Roswell, unless of course we accept the fact that God has told us that Nephilim lived on the earth and that they shall return, as per the book of Revelations, from under the earth and from under the sea. Once again, on closer examination of this evidence, it's perfectly clear that there are no aliens from a planet called Nibiru, as the entire ancient world believed, but there are in fact Nephilim living beneath the earth and under the sea who claim to be aliens from the planet Nibiru in order 
to cause the great deception as per the book of Revelation. shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. <laughs> 